Luis. Uh, before we start the next session, I would uh, like to say a, a huge f thanks to uh, our sponsors um, who play uh, a, a, an important role in this event even being held. Uh, Astigaraga Davis, Martin Kenny & Co, Kinetic Partners, Cayman National, Invest Barbados, Secure Hosting, the Cook Islands Financial Services Development Authority, the Ministry for Financial Services in the Cayman Islands, Cayman Finance, Murant Ozan, Zolfo Cooper, the Employment Law Group, Freeborn and Peters, Chris Global, Bennett Jones, the BVI International Financial Center, uh, Foreshore, uh, Whistleblowers Against Fraud, KK Forensic, Hush Blackwell, the BVI Association of Compliance Officers, the Cayman Islands Compliance Association, ICC Fraudnet, the Cayman Financial Review, Low Tax, Global Tax and Business Portal, KYC 360 Degrees, IFC Review, the Proceeds of Crime Lawyers Association, and the Global Incorporation Guide. So now I would like to introduce our next speaker who, uh, if he hadn't retired from the IRS last summer, wouldn't be here this year because of the sequester. And uh, Dan Reeves, before he retired, um, was the pioneer of uh, many of the uh, investigative techniques and methods that the IRS uh, have been using with what I would describe as wild success to obtain information about U.S. taxpayers who uh, have been doing things uh, illegally. So uh, Dan is going to uh, talk about his uh, experiences uh, leading uh, the IRS uh, investigation uh, into offshore tax structures. Okay, well, thank you, David. Um, and now for something completely different. It was interesting when I walked up here, I heard them playing the Beatles' Tax Man. Uh, and I, I was thinking to myself, I wonder if there's a song called The Ex Tax Man, because that's what I am now. I'm an ex tax man. Um, First, I want to say it's, it really is a great pleasure for me to be here again uh, at the annual Offshore Alert Conference. Uh, those of you who've been here before know that, uh, uh, or may know that uh, I've attended uh, probably six, seven, maybe even eight years in a row uh, at this conference and always found that it was, uh, if not the best, it's, it's certainly one of the best uh, offshore conferences around because it doesn't just bring together people of like mind, it brings together people of different views. Uh, and we get to share ideas and we get to share experiences and I can tell you that over the years I've learned a great deal from uh, some of the people in this room right now about offshore, uh, some of who are pro-offshore uh, and, uh, and still through uh, the knowledge I gained from them, uh, we were able to start looking at offshore and understanding it. I remember many years ago uh, before I went to work for, uh, on offshore, I used to investigate gambling casinos around the United States. Uh, for what's called anti-money laundering programs under the Bank Secrecy Act. Uh, it was my response, I led a team of agents that went around uh, investigating casinos to see if they were filing currency transaction reports, suspicious activity reports, and those kinds of things. Um, and, um, and, and through those efforts, I, I, I learned that you had to understand the industry that you were investigating, you know. Uh, we were very successful with the casino industry primarily because we took the time to learn it and understand it. Uh, and, and that accomplished many things. First of all, it allowed us to be successful, but secondly, uh, it minimized the, uh, the unnecessary burdens that we placed on the casino industry at the time. 
and, and I think we did the same thing with the offshore industry. Uh, coming to, these conf to this conference and others, uh, we learned a great deal about offshore. And through it, I think some of the successes that we're going to talk about now uh, uh, actually resulted from that. So again, I, I, uh, I thank David for inviting me back again. Uh, and uh, hopefully you will find this interesting. I do have to tell you that, as he said, I feel somewhat like the Lone Ranger up here today because in the past there have always been some federal people out there, either IRS or ATF or DEA or somebody out there, but uh, today there is not one single federal employee in this uh, room uh, because of the sequester. So with that, uh, let me uh, give you a little personal introduction real quick. My name is Daniel Reeves. I did retire from the United States Internal Revenue Service uh, in June of last year after serving 35 years as an IRS agent. Uh, the last 10 of which I spent investigating offshore tax evasion. Uh, so the perspective that I'm going to bring, the discussion that I'm going to uh, uh, make is, 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 is related to my experiences as a law enforcement and regulatory compliance officer. That's the perspective. Uh, someone who has investigated offshore tax evasion for, for more than 13 years uh, and who has conducted some of or led some of the, the uh, highest profile offshore tax investigations that, uh, that uh, IRS has conducted. Uh, what I'm going to do is tell you a little bit about my own experiences and, uh, and what we learned throughout this process and how we ended up achieving some of the great successes that I believe we have achieved. Uh, before I do, however, I do have a couple of caveats that I need to give you, a couple of uh, disclaimers. Uh, first of all, I am here appearing as a private citizen now, so any of the comments or, or, or opinions I express are my own. Uh, you should not assume that they are the uh, opinion of the Internal Revenue Service, the United States Treasury Department, the Department of Justice, or the United States government in general. They are my opinions and, and my own. Um, second, I, I still remain covered by the same rules of confidentiality that covered me when I was working for the IRS. So I, cannot, uh, I will not be telling you any heretofore unknown secret details about any investigations I led or any other matters that might have been under my official control when I was, uh, when, when I was working. Um, what I am going to do is tell you about my experiences investigating offshore and investigating the, the financial structures and financial arrangements uh, that are set up. I'm going to talk about the program that we created at the IRS called the Offshore Compliance Initiative. Uh, and I'm going to tell you about some of uh, the successful projects we developed, some of the successful investigations we conducted, uh, and, and some of the uh, information we learned uh, along the way. Now, 